السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أزدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear brothers and sisters, we are witnessing the night of the 18th of Shaban 1445 years after the Hijrah, the migration of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which coincides with February, 20, February 27, 2024 I welcome you to our new series which is the Zakat series and in this series we are going to talk about the rulings and the etiquettes uh, and those who are uh, going to give Zakat, what are the rulings of their wealth and who to give Zakat and so on and so forth based upon the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Today the topic is what is Zakat? Zakat comes from the word which means purification. Imam Ibn Kathir rahmatullahi alayhi in, mentions in his Nihaya book, and Nihaya. Uh, zakat, the meaning is an nama, what tatahir. Nama means increase, tatahir means purification. Also, zakat means baraka, blessings, and al madh, praise. And he mentions that this word is used in the Kitab and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu with all of these meanings meaning increase, purification. Baraka and praise. Um, and inshallah, we will see from uh, the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And today, uh, before we go that, we want to also understand the shar'i meaning or the legislative meaning of the zakat. Zakat, as our ulama they described, is a special obligatory charity that is due upon a free, matured, sane Muslim. And this is considered, meaning this action of the charity, obligatory charity, is considered as the third pillar of Islam, one of the major pillars of from the pillars of Islam. And this zakat is due at a special time on special commodities of wealth with a special threshold and a specific amount and should be given in a specific way locally to a specific category of people that has been described and categorized by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his book. This is zakat. So all of these details doesn't come in one ayah or one hadith, but once we put all of these pieces together, we see the full picture, how the zakat should be given, when it should be given, from which wealth it should be given, to which people it should be given, and where we can spend it and so on and so forth. Today, uh, before I end, I want to discuss two verses in Surah Tawbah and that specifically describes a zakat to the Prophet Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Tawbah, verse number 102, uh, خَلَطُوا عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَآخَرَ سَيِّئًا and there are others who have acknowledged their sins, meaning those who realize that they have sinned. They have mixed a deed that was righteous with another that was evil. And this group of people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them in Al Madina, in the time of the Prophet. There are the Sabiqun al Awalun, Allah mentions them in verse number 101. Then he talks about the Munafiqun, and the third category here, Allah is talking about a group of believers. They are believers, but they mixed up good things with the bad things. And we are talking about a group of as al Kiram, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, maradahum, who were going through the purification process. Allah Ta'ala says, Asa Allahu ayyatuba alayhim inna Allah ghafurur rahim. Perhaps Allah will turn to them in repentance, in forgiveness. Surely Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. 
After describing these three categories of people, especially this third group, Allah Ta'ala says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, min biha wa salli alayhim. Take sadaqa from their wealth in order to purify them and sanctify them with it. Salli huh? alayhim and invoke Allah. Salli alayhim here means to make dua. Allah is telling the Prophet وسلم, to make dua for these people who will give charity to Allah. Huh? Inna salataka sakan, sakanun lahum. Indeed your dua is a source of security and, pure, uh, and, and a, a sukun for them. A tranquility for them. Wallahu sami'un alim. And Allah is all hearer, all knower. He hears the dua and he knows with which intent the dua is made and he knows meaning he knows why the dua is made and who deserves the dua who deserves the answer of this dua not everybody who gives charity will receive the reward unless his intention is pure his wealth is pure and he gives it only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ sadaqa. Now the word sadaqa here means the zakat. As the ulama they mentioned here, sadaqa is not talking about general charity. He is, ta is, ta is talking about the obligatory charity. And some of the people, they misunderstood this verse. They said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to take the charity. But when the Prophet died, they said the Prophet is gone. So they would not give charity to Abu Bakr as Siddiq. So as we know in the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, Abu Bakr as Siddiq he fought these people to prove that their aqidah or their belief is false. This verse doesn't just only specifically talking about the Prophet but rather this verse is talking about the Prophet and those who will be in his position later on until the day of judgment. Zakat cannot be made optional. Zakat is obligatory. So they were corrected and he fought them until they repented of course many of them and they gave him the zakat. Then a group of people also said that well this verse is only for the people the third category, the people who mix their good deeds with the bad deeds huh? and so on and so forth. But actually this verse is Aam, general. Although it looks like it is talking about a specificity, but it is not. In this case it is Aam, meaning Zakat should be taken from all sorts of people, righteous, unrighteous Muslims, both groups. But from what Amwal? From what wealth? Is it general or is it a specific? Of course, in this case, it is not general. It is a specific. So as you can see this verse, to understand it, you need to need the sunnah of the... We need to understand the sunnah of the Prophet Because there is some words which looks like it is general. And there are some words which looks like which is a specific. So what is a specific? What is general? All of this is defined in the Quran, of course, in other verses, and also, of course, from the Sunnah of the Prophet. The point, my brothers and sisters, zakat should not be taken lightly. Zakat should be learned. A lot of brothers and sisters, when they go for Hajj, when they go for Umrah, they're very serious, which is very good. They want to know the steps and the rulings, which is excellent, wonderful, it's praiseworthy. The same attitude should be applied for every aspect of the religion. For example, Salat. Why do we just pray like the way we were taught? Why don't we understand how to raise our hand, where to put our hands, uh, when to raise our hands, what to say in which occasion, uh, exactly what the Prophet used to say. This is how it should be learned based upon evidences from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Similarly for the case of Zakat, we do not just go with what we hear because sometimes things are as you can see misinterpreted the same verse can be misinterpreted khud bin amwalihim oh allah is only talking about the prophet here amwalihim is talking about all sorts of wealth meaning we have to take from all sorts of wealth from everything is this true no it's not true not all sorts of wealth has zakat upon it for example 
okay and which which type of people that we have to take the charity the zakat from all the people people who have small amount of wealth what if they have very small amount of wealth but they do have wealth and that wealth does not reach what is known as the nisab we'll talk about the nisab should we also take from their wealth because at the end of the day that is their wealth because according to this verse if we just apply this verse we have to take from their wealth too but actually we shouldn't we are not allowed to and so to understand the meaning of all of these verses properly and the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, zakat should be learned. That's why Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala, the great Imam of uh, who is the collector and the compiler of Sayyid al-Bukhari, he has a chapter in Kitab al-Ilm. He says, Al-Ilm qabla al-Qawli wal-Amal. Knowledge is before the statement and the action. Many people, they jump into saying things, into doing things, into practicing things, into teaching things. And this is how the bid'ah and the misunderstanding, it spreads. And generation after generation, people keep on doing something wrong. And they think what they're doing is the sunnah. And they do not know the sunnah. So when the sunnah is taught to them, they think it is something unknown. So it is something wrong. And they immediately reject it. We have to change. And we have to correct this methodology and come back to the understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah. It's very simple. Religion is very simple. If we learn systematically, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, everything will be clear. And inshallah, the zakat that we will give or take will purify us, will increase our wealth, and will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will praise us. And, glorif and, and glorified be He will praise those mutasaddiqin wal mutasaddiqat, those who give charity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.